Yo, good morning guys. How's everyone doing guys? I hope you guys are doing fantastic. You know what I'm saying? Hi right, guys, I just woke up, you know. Always like to get some fresh air. The first thing I do is just come out here to the balcony. And I got my beautiful view right there. See, uh, let me show you guys the view of the beach. See that, guys? The beach. But I don't know why the weather is like kind of like overcast. Like, uh, look at this. Like, it, it's weird over there a little bit, but uh, if you look here, it's kind of nice. But, you know, I'm blessed. It's still a bright day, so, it, you know, it's a great start for your day, you know. I'm swinging. Anyways, guys, uh, enough of that messing. So, yeah, guys, first thing I like to do, right, so if you've got a patio, right, always try to, you know, get up when you get up in the morning or whatever. I don't know what time you guys wake up, but try to get some fresh air first, right? To start your day so go like this right so i'll show you a tip so if you want to um have a vacuum stomach right so this is what you do so i know i mean having a vacuum stomach is it might not be the most important thing for you guys but trust me it is because when you suck your stomach in and then you know breathe out through your stomach what happens is your brain remembers that your stomach you don't have to let your stomach out so you, you kind of don't let it like loose, you know, so that's what happens when people's gut kind of, you know uh, Sticks out so you have to do this guys. Let me show you guys this. Uh, let me see if I can put a camera uh, I don't have a I don't have that thing that uh, I already ordered the Godzilla pod or whatever we're gonna call that so it's coming, but uh, uh, You know I need to wait for it because it's coming from the UK and my friend just you know He sent it with DHL so she'll be here with me today. So when I have that, guys, I'll, I'll make sure that I put a bit of footage for you guys. So anyways, guys, look at this, right? So in the morning, right, so when you guys wake up, always make sure you do this so you don't have a fat stomach, right? Before you drink water, before you drink anything, you can have a little bit of water if you're really thirsty, but it's fine. But like, have, try to have no water and then you do the water. So do this, right? Because you know, your stomach has to be basically, why I'm saying do it on an empty stomach, because your stomach basically has to be pretty much empty, right? From liquid and, you know, uh, food, solid food. So, it doesn't, I mean, just because you're not having food, it doesn't mean you can have water. Water is also kind of make, kind of water. Blo uh, the water bloats you, right? So you have, get you get water retention. So that's why it's the best if you do this exercise on an empty stomach, guys. So let me show you guys. So so you you sound like this, right? So you go like this, right? So you're gonna breathe in with your stomach in, and then you're gonna breathe out through your stomach. Okay, let's go, guys. Let me show you. One, two, three. Let's go. Did you guys see how I breathe in to my, to my stomach and then breathe out through my stomach? Because it's kind of also like doing abs. So when you're doing this, guys, you're also doing abs. So it's a great exercise uh, for you to kind of get that definition in your abs and for you to, you know, to get all the stress out, you know, because our body's full of stress, right? Our nervous system always, you know, stressed out and, you know, in cortisol level, whatever. But in the morning, right, when you wake up, in the evening, you should do the same exercise, right? So what I do is I lie down on the bed, a little bit different. You don't you don't suck your stomach. So when you when you uh, you have to uh, basically swallow your breath, right? So and then do this, right? So let me show you. Well, that's what you do in the evening, right? So you, so you get the stress out and it helps you with your lower back. Sometimes you need to have the tightness in your lower back. So you, this is what you do, right? So instead of going like in, you go like this. You put your one hand on your stomach, on your bed, all right? You're in your bed, your right hand on your belly button, and then you go like this. So you breathe in, right? And then look. And then you breathe out through your stomach. That makes sure that all the stress is out, you know? 
uh, you know, you can sleep, you know, because your body, when we don't, we don't actually breathe, guys, right? We think that, oh, yeah, we breathe, right? And yeah, 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 you know, but then we're stressed. Our low back is tight. Our glutes are tight. Our body is stressed, just full of stress. And that's because we don't breathe. So it's very important, guys, for you to breathe in the morning and the evening before you go to sleep. In the evening, especially because, you, you know, throughout the whole day, you had some stress, you know, you had work, your school, your, you know, whatever, you know. So let's go, right? Let's go two more reps. I mean, two more sets for the vacuum. I already done the other one. I, you don't need to do the other one for the stress risk. I've done it in the evening. So let's go. It's the second set, right? Let's go. One, two, three. One more, guys. Never give up. Always. If you have to do three sets, four sets, do it. You know you have to do three or four sets, do it. I recommend three. Three is fine. You don't need to go for four. I've done. I've been doing three for like for like for a while now. It worked for me. Um, three sets of fifteen to twenty seconds of hold in holding your breath and releasing it through your stomach is the best. It was a work for me. Um, see if you can hold it longer after a while. So practice you know to, you know take a week or so after a week or a couple of days two three days if you feel like you can hold it for more don't release it straight away just the longer you hold it the more your body is going to be able to realize and the more it's going to you have your body has a memory right your brain has a memory so the longer you hold it the longer you'll actually while you're not doing the exercise the longer you'll actually hold it in so the longer you won't make it stick out you know so it's a good strategy guys so you know i did two sets so let's do one more guys one more we're done let's go one two three We did it, guys. We did it together. Look at this bicep, man. Look at this motherfucker right here, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyways, guys, I just feel so blessed, man. Like, every single day I wake up and I get to see this, guys, like this, that, this, that, the beach. Guys, I am so blessed. Like, thank God. Like, I'm so grateful. Like, every day, guys, if you don't get... If you don't, if you, if you forget to be uh, grateful to God, I mean, if you forget being grateful, you're going to get depressed. I was in the worst depression of my life, right? And uh, I was 15 years old, right? And I used to live in London. And we bought, a, my dad bought me an apartment, right? You call that flat in the UK, but it's the same as an apartment. So I wanted to commit suicide when I was 15 years old. And I didn't do it because I believed in God. And I knew if I killed myself, God would punish me in the hellfire. And then raise me again, kill me, raise me again, keep keep burning me in the keep like burning me in the hellfire base, keep punishing me. Because I was like, how could I do that? God gave me everything. God I'm healthy. And I looked around my apartment, I'm like, who has this? Like I'm 15 years old, guys. And who whose parents bought them a freaking apartment? Like, come on, at 15, I have cash, like it was like a half million pound car. Like I mean half million uh, half million pounds. So it, British pounds is like like what, 800,000, 900, around 800,000 something, 800 something thousand, almost a million dollars, right? A million bucks. So almost a million grand. I mean, uh, yeah, right. So almost, uh, I was like over, just over 800,000 uh, uh, dollars. So yeah, guys, like I was ungrateful, right? And I was like, I'm, I don't blame myself too much because look, other than being ungrateful, I was alone, I was 15. It was too early for me to stay alone. I mean, to live alone. And uh, I'm gonna go inside, guys, it's too cold. Um, it was 
too, way too early for me to, you know, uh, live by myself, right? So my mom, uh, she used to come and go six months, you know, I was by myself every year in the six months she was with me. So half a year I was living by myself, half a year I was living with my mom. And um, it was just hard when she was gone, you know, cause I was so, I was so attached to her and I love my mom, you know, and I was only 15, right? So I was kind of not, um, independent i was really depending on my mom and you know i was i was raised like with my family so it was so hard that moving uh to the uk um you know i was by myself basically so uh and the reason why guys i lived alone is because uh for you, for you guys if, i mean for those who want to wonder is because i lived i moved to the uk when i was like late 13 right so <clears throat> and i was um late 14 uh, late 13 around just before 14 like maybe three months before two months before so anyways uh, let's say I was 14, right? 14 years old, and I moved to London at 15, just before turning 15. So the reason why I'm, when I moved to London, we bought our own apartment is because when I used to live in the in Cambridge, I used to live in a host family. So I used to go to school. I used to do like um, IELTS, which is English, and I used to do IGCSE. I went to Bel Bellabys College uh, in Cambridge. Not, not the Queen Campus, but the something called Manson, uh, Manor Campus. I think it was called Manor Campus. So it's not the Queen Campus, the main one, but it's the other one for, for like, for people who want to do foundation in like uh, business and all that. Um, yeah, guys, so I went there and uh, uh, I just realized uh, it wasn't meant for me. Like Cambridge was just, just so, like it, it, was a, it was empty in a ghost town, right? So it was basically full of Asian students riding bikes not just asian but most asian like i would see so many asian i wouldn't even see british people like and i was like everybody uses bicycles it's not about that I don't, i'm not I'm discriminate I don't, i'm not racist i'm against that completely but it's just it was such a ghost town like there was no place to hang out and when i used to walk to my walk up to my uh, uh to my host family's place like the house um i used to be so depressed because it was like a village Seriously, it was like a town village, um, like back home in Baku. I mean, this is not a village, guys. This is prettier than Dubai. This is much more than Dubai. This is like Dubai on steroids. So, um, yeah, guys, it was so it was so hard for me to stay there. So I moved there like September two thousand. Uh, let me guys drink my water. So I moved there, guys, on September uh, of two thousand. Um, six and i left uh cambridge uh on june and i moved to london and we got our apartment and we, i was renting with a, uh at a, at a place who is now my best friend and and then we brought up our place in november 2007 and october i think october and we moved there so the reason why i moved is because when i used to i mean i moved to my own apartment because when i used to live in a host family guys uh, there used to be so many misunderstandings. There used to be just like so many limits. Uh, you know, I used to live with two Georgian guys from Georgia, you know, the, the country next to Azerbaijan. And then we used to hang out, we used to have good relations and we used to, you know, always go in each other's room and always gather up and, you know, you know, team up and, you know, just watch movies and have, have a laugh and enjoy ourselves, you know, cause we, we need to enjoy life. You can't just study on 24 seven and you can't just, you have to have your social life. Social, your social life is more important than your studying. Your social life is study itself. Your social life, you learn so many things through speaking to people. I've learned so many, I've read so many books. I haven't learned as, as, as much of, as I've learned when I was socializing with people and getting new information. Because there's always going to be something the other person knows that you don't know. So anyways, I was, you know, I was so happy with them. But uh, I realized that when we all gather up, in the, when, when we go, let's say, to one of the guys' rooms, right? They would switch the Wi-Fi and then we wouldn't be able to watch the movie. And we'd be like, what the hell is going on? And then the the lady right the host lady the one who lives there with the she she was living with a husband and with a kid i think she was turkish and the husband was from spain he was spanish and they had a kid his name was uh i, I can't remember his name but anyways they were turning off the wi-fi right so just we would go to our rooms because we were, we were talking and we we're kind of a little bit loud i guess because the walls are like so cheap there and you could hear every single thing and I don't blame her, like when we're talking, you know, we're young, we're like, what, irresponsible, we're like, what, 14 years old, we're just kids, you know, I was 14, he was like 15, and the other guy was like 16, um, so we're pretty young, uh, you know, teenagers, weren't even grown up, weren't even 18, uh, an adult, so 
they could hear us and then they were like, you know, they purposely switched off the Wi-Fi and then they were like, you know, trying to say, hey, go to your rooms, you know? And then they were kind of coming and knocking on the door and say, hey, it's too late, Bet uh, they were saying bedtime, bedtime. So that used to kind of piss me off that you turn off my Wi-Fi just so we could, we would go in all our rooms. Once we were going back in our rooms, then they were turning off the Wi-Fi. And I'm like, what the hell, like, come on, man, what is this? Like a prison? Like, I need my privacy, I need my room, I need my space, I need my fun, I need my friends. I need to be able to enter to watch movies with them. We love them watching American movies. The best movies were American movies. We love watching Fast and Furious, Tokyo Drift. I love American movies. I love America anyways. I love everything America has done. The freedom of speech. We fought for our independency. 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 For many years. And we won it. So, America is the most beautiful, most rarest, uh, the one that has balls, seriously. The one has to, to have the one has has balls to stand up for themselves, for himself or herself, and say, I'm proud to be an American and America is the greatest country in the world and I'm ready to give my life for it. That's America, goddammit. Like that's me. That's me. I love America. I would do anything for America. I would die for America just to kind of give you something that would make you the wealthiest or just you know, just to kind of give you something like a knowledge about cancer. You know, like uh, smoking, you know, be careful with that, you know, because that activates your cancer cells. Um, pork, don't eat pork, because God forbid pork in the Bible, in the Quran, Torah, for a reason. God said in the Bible, don't eat the flesh of the swine. So don't eat that. Mm, also, man, I just love my Christian brothers. Like, seriously, like what America has done is just unbelievably extraordinary because America was the only country to stand up for themselves and to team up and say we want to fight we want to fight this and no more killing blacks blacks are equal to us we're all human beings in this world and as christians we have to respect and treat one another no matter what their race is what their color is as long as we're america that we're united will become the greatest country in the world and will, will be better than other countries and it will be more prosperous and more, you know, greatest and most wealthiest, most intellectual, most advanced, most developed country in the world. And guess what? When they did team up and they feared God, they became the greatest country in the world, guys. They became the greatest country in the world. Thank God. Like, it's just a miracle how when people they realize that they're here for a test and they have to help each other, right? Uh, to grow. Um, because we are brothers in this world and we are brothers to another. One brother is a brother to another and a sister is a sister to another sister. So, um, yeah, guys, that's what Americans are known for. Americans are my brothers and I love them for it, for, um, you know, the independency, for them winning the independency, um, celebrating the independency day every single year. Um, I think it happens, if I'm not mistaken, July the 11th, because um, I, I lived in the, in the States. I've been living there, I just moved here. Like, I'm just gonna be here for a while and I'm gonna move back. I'm just here, and I, I'm just here and there, you know, I'm just walking on my gym, guys. I'm just opening up a gym. It's gonna be the most famous gym in the world. I'm going to be, um, we're gonna be ordering Arnold Schwarzenegger statue with Franco Colombo, because, come on guys, like Franco, peace be upon him, rest be, rest be upon him, like he passed away guys, he, he drowned, and then he woke up, he was in uh, Sicily, uh, in, in, in Italy, and um, you know, he was drowned, and then you know, he, he got up, he wasn't feeling well, and then, he, you know, he was okay, and then after a while he just died, it was just God's plan, he was just meant to die, but it's just so, such a sad death that, you know, he, poor, the poor guy died drowning, like, I guess, I guess it's not a bad death because he didn't die drowning. He was drowning, yes, but then maybe I think God helped him, right? Something helped him and they they uh, helped him, they saved him. So he was okay after a while, after, you know, they saved him after he was drowning. But then he started feeling bad again and then he passed away. I guess this was the most peaceful death ever because there's a difference between guys dying, drowning, and there's a difference between um, you, you drowned a little bit, but then you were okay. So you realize you didn't die drowning. So maybe God did that to kind of help you 
So after a while, you know, you, you start feeling a little bit like not, not so well. You know God didn't hate you because God drowns people who he hates. He doesn't allow you to say those words that, you know, I believe, I believe, now I believe. But if he died drowning, I don't think he would have said that. But because God, I think, allowed him, God loves him so much that he helped Arnold Schwarzenegger. He was a godly person. He chose bodybuilding, the, the God's most loved sport, the one that prevents you from fights, the one that makes you strong, um, the one that makes you look sexy as fuck, sexy as F. And girls, look, look, look at that. That's God's blessing, guys. Bodybuilding is God's uh, sport. And that's why bodybuilders live until like, what, 90, 93, 100. Even uh, there was, uh, I think Franco, he died when he was 70, 81 or something. Yeah, 81 or 82, 83. So you could, if he didn't drown that day and if he, if he felt okay after, but he wouldn't have died. Like, it was just meant to be, I guess. But, you know, you could tell how bodybuilders are healthy. That's why they don't have cancer, guys, because bodybuilding is a miracle. Bodybuilding is a beautiful sport and it should have always been the Olympic Games and I'll be the one to, to place in Olympic Games. I'll be the first one in the history, guys, to place bodybuilding where it belongs, in Olympic Games. Once I have my titles, because right now I'm dealing with my, with my, I had my surgery like uh, a year ago, a year and a half ago, you know. And right now I, I, I have a lot of toxins basically left from anesthesia because after when I woke up from my sleep, right, my anesthesia, the drug was start wearing out, uh, wearing off. I felt like exhausted, like I couldn't recover, like I was so tired, I couldn't even do my exercises, you know, the physical therapy, uh, you know, the external and ro uh, internal rotation. So I felt like I can't even train, I can't go to the gym, so I'm extremely exhausted, right? Because basically what my doctor said here is because when you go under anesthesia twice, because I went to this surgery and this surgery, right? So when you go under, when you are, when you're under anesthesia like twice, I was, this surgery took two hours and 40 minutes. I was asleep for like, what, three, four hours. And then this one, I was asleep for um, one hour, and only one hour and 20 it took the surgery time. One hour, so two hours and plus like around four, uh, five to six hours, right, I was asleep. I wasn't even in this world. I was just a kind of a co in a coma. So it's really hard for you to wake up from that. It's a kind of a boxers, right? When boxers get brain damage or they, co they go into coma, it, sometimes they don't even wake up, you know? It's a very dangerous procedure. Surgery is not a joke, guys. So that's why you have to avoid uh, injuries. You don't you have to avoid tearing your tendon like I did. So you'll have to watch my videos, guys. I'm gonna be, I can't train now right now because I'm using, I'm, I'm so exhausted, guys, I'm fatigued. So I'm exercising, I'm not exercising. I'm getting the treatments from the doctor. You know, he's putting me through IVs. He's putting some of the vitamins, cleansing things, like liver detoxes in it to kind of, you know, to, to help me out. Because he said that when you, that drug, the local anesthesia, is it, it you know, the toxins of it, they, everything goes through your liver, right? So when you eat a food, you know, eat food, you inject vitamins, everything has to go through your liver. That's number one. So he was saying that when they inject you with anesthesia, the toxins, right, it stayed in your liver. Anesthesia takes a long time to cleanse. You have to do IVs for like three, four months. If you're a young person, three to four months. If you're a little bit old, after like 40, 50, you have to do it for like six months, seven months, eight, even one year. There was a lady who was working at the, I mean, she still works there. She told me at the, at the place that I usually go get my treatments, I mean, blood tests and to make sure everything is normal and to what to fix so the doctor knows. And she said to me, listen, I also had two surgeries, I think in her kidneys or livers. She said, I, she said to me, I, she also had two surgeries within like, what, five or six months in between. Uh, my surgery was only three months in between. So I had this one, April, um, uh, January 2018, January 2018, guys, April 2018. So after three months of this surgery, I had this one. So it's a, a lot of surgeries, a lot of surgeries in one year, right? So too many surgeries. So what happens after the second surgery, that's when I started feeling really exhausted. Same thing with a lady. She said, I couldn't even walk after my second surgery. I couldn't even walk five minutes. She said she couldn't even walk for five minutes, guys. Five minutes. So what does that mean? So that means local anesthesia is so bad for you. It's a kind of very ungodly way for you to, you know, for someone to put you into sleep. Sorry, guys, let me drink my water. So it's a very ungodly way for you to fall asleep. It's kind of, it's not even actually falling asleep. They're forcing you to sleep. So, and you know, God said, you know, don't use these drugs, you know, always, you know, natural way is the best, right? So when the sun is, you know, not there anymore, you know, and then, you know, the moon is coming, it's dark, it's pretty dark, you know, it gets dark, uh, and the, your body produces melatonin, right, which is the hormone that's responsible for you to, you know, feel sleepy and everything. So, um, 
that's how God created you and designed us. So when we don't see light, we start feeling sleepy. And that's true. When, you know, when I see too much light, it wakes me up because it takes away my melatonin hormone that, that I need to, to make me feel sleepy. So, um, you know, that's what happened, guys. That freaking to having these surgeries and that's like, what, three months in between. And uh, just surgery, guys. Anesthesia is such a hard drug on your, on your body, on your livers, on your organs. On um, on nervous system, nervous system, guys. When you go, when you inject your local anesthesia, you go through, it goes through your nervous system, and it kind of, uh, um, irritates it and aggravates, it and it kind of puts so much stress on your nervous system. So uh, your pain receptors, right? So, uh, you go through much so much pain that it's hard for you to wake up and recover. You can wake up, yes, but but you won't recover. So I remember when I was. Right after the surgery, I was still asleep, but the surgery was done. And it kind of sit me like in a chair, like this. Not, not like this, but kind of higher. The back was like into here. So that's what they do right after surgery. They wait, they sit you down, you know, they put the, those things on you. But they already they already gave you that white suit anyways that, that you wear. Okay, like what do you call it, a garment, whatever. And uh, they wait for you to wake up, basically. They wait for you to wake up. Because... Once they they keep injecting you with that local anesthesia uh, while you're in the thing in the surgery room and they keep injecting if, if, if they know if they notice that the surgery is taking longer so they did inject me a little bit more because they were estimating that the that there's gonna gonna be one tear and it wasn't gonna be that big so they were estimating that the surgery for the first for the, my left shoulder um, was gonna take uh, you know only like one hour to two two hours that was the doctor's estimate but then I was there for the surgery took two hours and 40 minutes. And then when the doctor came and told my mom, you know, he was very stressed out, you know, he said to me, you know, my mom was like, he, the doctor said to me that he was, he didn't tell him that, but he looked very stressed out, the doctor. And he was like, he had so many things. He had so many like issues, like, uh, you know, tissue tears, like he had so many like rotator cuff, his rotator cuff was torn, you know, his uh, shoulder biceps, long head biceps, uh, of the, sh uh, the, the shoulder lo long head biceps tendon was, Torn, and there was a lot of fluid. You know, it was very uh, inflamed. So we had to clean, clean. So they had to clean a lot, uh, take all the fluid that's causing, you know, that's causing the inflammation, right? So they did. They had to do a lot of cleaning apart from fixing the tear and putting the tear together. And uh, they actually, what they do is, when you have a tear, right? This is your, uh, I don't can't remember this scapula's bone or whatever it's scapula, and then. This is the humerus bone, right? Humerus bone. So the reason why a lot of people tear their shoulders naturally is because when the way like the way we've been designed, right? You see this, you have tendon right in between this bone, the humerus bone and the scapula's bone. So so always when you do these exercises, right? Look what's happening. If the tendon has been in between those two bones, it's gonna get aggravated because the bone is gonna kind of grind it, you know? So that's why people tear their shoulder, bicep, shoulder ten, shoulders a lot, shoulder bicep tendon, long head bicep tendon, whatever, because of that. Because the because originally naturally our uh, tendons are like other tendon is between you know the, those two bones. So when you have a tear here like mine, originally usually attached the tendon is attached to this bone, right? But you know when you have a tear, they can do it. Uh, they can uh, re they can't reattach it. They can, but you'll tear again because that this bone is always weak. That's why I tore it. Naturally, the way like God has designed it, you know, we we have it. You know, it's just there. So what they did is, uh, it's very unproductive. And they said to me they've done it before where they reattach it to the same scapula's bone and you know it just it tears again. So they said it's very unproductive. You know, so what they do is because the humerus bone is thicker and strong. I can feel how thick it is when I'm touching it. It's like much thicker. So because it's uh, stronger, I mean thicker, and the bone is well, the bone density is there, and then you know it's better. So. They attach it here, right, the humerus bone, right? So once they attach it to the humerus bone, it doesn't tear. There is no way on earth it's going to tear. He said to me, I was like, is there a chance that once after you do my surgery, you know, you fix the tear, whatever, can it be torn again, like, easily? He said, no. So I mean, if it gets torn again and you come back, I'll be like laughing. I've done, I have done, I've used like thick kind of, uh, what do you call those, uh, uh, kind of like ropes, they're not ropes, but they're like thick, um, uh, rope, like rope, I don't know what you call them, and they, these thick bands, and they kind of, you know, tighten your uh, tendon, and they, they use that to attach it to your humerus bone, and they said that they're, 
I have, I've done it and I've attached it to the humerus bone. So now it's stronger, you know, than before. So I've given you a better shoulder now. And, uh, you know, he said that, you know, it won't, it, it'll be funny for me. I'll, I'll, it'll, it'll, it's, it's, it'll, it's almost impossible, he said. It's, it's almost going to be impossible if you say that, Samir, you know, you tore it. Of course, everything's possible. If you, if you don't do the exercise right, if you're not careful again, you might tear again. But he said, as long as your form is right and you know what you're doing, uh, you're not lifting with your shoulders, but you're lifting with your elbows. Because guys, it's very important when you lift, with, you have to lift it with the elbows, pull with the elbows. When you shoulder exercise pullings with dumbbells or barbells, always use a lift with the elbows. Lift the elbows high above your ear like this. Don't just stand here. Lift all above your ears. So that's what happened, right? I didn't lift with my elbows and I lift here, you know, with my shoulders. I was lifting with my shoulders so that just, look, look what happens. Aggravating you. Look, this is better. So anyways, and the weight was heavy, so I was doing like, well, like, 30 pounds on each side on a, on an easy barbell curl, you know, this, this curly bar. And uh, that was like, what, 30 pounds on each side, 60 pounds, and then that, the whole thing itself was like 20 pounds, you know, the barbell, the easy barbell curl. That was like, what, 80 pounds, 85 pounds. That's pretty heavy if, you're, if your form isn't right. So I did that, and you know, after three months when I was on the incline, I noticed that, oh shit, something happened. So because I've been injuring it before, and my, my, my form was so poor, when I, even when I was doing chest, uh, you know how when you guys lift with your chest, let me show you guys something. When you when you're doing like the incline, right? Incline, bench press, whatever. You don't have to go like like pull. You know, you have to do this, right? So n none of that. You know, uh, moving your shoulders to the front, like you know, like hold. Don't hold your shoulders at the front. Like don't go like this. this is, you see my shoulders. My my. This is where my tendon is. Shoulder bicep. That's when it aggravates, and then after a while it gets painful, and then you get uh, you know injuries. Which you have to bring your chest forward like this and pull your shoulder blades back and squeeze them so when you lift right when you come down imagine there's a pencil pencil right here in the middle of your upper back right here imagine you're squeezing it that's why you have to make sure you squeeze your um your upper back you you squeeze that and then you you push when you push make sure your chest is forward your shoulder blades are back and then you know squeeze go like this you see my chest is house forward and now look at, look at the difference. Before, this is how I was doing, right? Guys, before I was doing like this. I was, my form was wrong and I was like this on the bench. Look, this is all doing chest, this is all doing shoulders. This is not, not the chest, is look. When you go like this, pull your chest forward, your pecs, and then pull your shoulder blades back, you know, and then not just go like this, but look, 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 it's bad. Look, it's kind of making this forward. You don't have to use this. Do everything possible and then, you know, do this as well. Don't do look like this. Don't go like this. Look. Go like this. Pull them as back as far as you can. Then push, push. Make sure you, you, you squeeze your chest as well. Hold it there for a little bit. One second, two second, hold. And go down as slow as you can. Go as slow as you can. The more slow you go, the more muscle mm -hmm. fibers you activate, guys, and the more muscle growth you have. And you become bigger and you get better pump and, and the results stay longer. If you go fast, you go, you go jacked, you know, you go pump. It's like you're getting a pump. You get really big, but then, you know, it's like, it goes away. After 30 minutes, it goes away. But when you go up slow, I mean, go, the positive, right? This is positive, right? You have to go fast when you're pushing. Pulling, the, uh, the, the negative, you have to go slow, really, really slow, 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 as slow as you can. Take like even five, six seconds, and then go up fast, one second, and then hold it there for one second, two seconds, two seconds, up two seconds, and then go again, slow, 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 you know? Take like eight seconds, 10 seconds, and then hold it here for like one second, and then push it again. Hold it, make sure you stretch it, you know? But make sure your form is right, your chest is forward, you put your put chest forward, and put, put your shoulder blades back. None of that stuff. Look, you could be, your chest might be forward, but you could be lifting like this. No, pull your chest forward really as far as you can to the front, and then pull your chest, shoulder blades back. Make sure that your elbows are doing the work. Make sure you're lifting with the elbows. You know, you're lifting with your shoulders so you don't get injured like me, guys. I'm trying to warn you guys. I'm trying to help you so you don't go through what I've gone through, you know, and get yourself injured, guys. I really love you guys, and I don't want you to go through the same thing because once you injure your shoulder and you put strain on your shoulder, that's it. You're going to tear it easily, and you, you need to get surgery. You don't need to go through that. Surgery is really hard to recover. Look at me. I'm, I'm, still, not, I'm still not able to train because... You know, my, and my livers are intoxicated. I mean, uh, they have so many toxins from my local anesthesia or general anesthesia. So guys, make sure that, you know, you don't do these things. You don't go through that. So um, always have a partner or 
not just a partner, your partner might know, know, know nothing, he might have his ego and he might say, oh, I want to lift, I need this technique, uh, you know, because then it hurt, doesn't hurt my shoulders, you know, like, come on, so it doesn't hurt, like, so I can push heavier, yes, you can push heavier, but then you won't push for long, you'll, get, you'll tear your tendon one day, because this shoulder injury is so common, right, it's very common, and look at this guy, you know what I'm saying, anyways, guy, because I've been lifting, right, like, I've always been getting shoulder injuries in the past, always, because my form was always bad. I was uneducated. My knowledge about bodybuilding was so poor. So it's all my fault. I should have learned. You know, because before you do something, come on, guys. How would you? Why would you do that if you don't know how to lift? You should be scared, right? You should be worried about yourself. You should care about yourself. You should be grateful that you have, you know, you've been, you are there for the, you know, with the, you know, you have a good health, um, healthy joints, healthy tendon. You don't have nothing torn. You don't have cancer. So if you don't have the, those things. And you, you know, you know. Let's say, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. If you have cancer, training is gonna reduce your active cells even better. But I'm just saying that you know, you have to just you know know how to how to lift, bro. Like you have to learn how to lift before you do that certain exercise. Go on YouTube. Don't just don't just watch one video. Watch for like if you want to do the same exercise, watch like two three people's video at least, and then see if they're doing it the same way. If they're doing the same way, that means they are you know they know what they're talking about. And always trust. Uh, people's reviews and you know like go and watch people's videos that have a lot of subscribers and you know uh, a lot of views because those are the guys who know what they're talking about this is why they've been able to track and grow because people when they see somebody who knows what they're talking about they, they show them how to properly lift and they don't they have a beautiful physique that's already a credit that's already a, an evidence a proof that I, if I've been able to not injure myself and be able to create this body and still be able to lift I know what I'm talking about so look at the guy's physique as well and he doesn't have to be huge or like super lean, but look at his physique and make sure that his chest is always forward. Like, you know, when he's even standing up and talking, you know, intro introducing the video, make sure that you, you can see his posture is right. If his posture is wrong, that means he has been lifting wrong. And when you don't lift right, you know, your posture isn't right, you don't, uh, you know, pull your chest forward and, you know, pu push, uh, you know like push your shoulder blades back. If you don't do that, I mean, if you don't push your chest forward and pull your shoulder blade back, what happens is, you get you get that bad posture, right? So if that guy who's talking about you know how to lift, but he has posture is bad, or he's lifting with the with his shoulders like I showed you, like how not to lift, don't trust him, guys. So anyways, guys, uh, I better run. Like I have to um, have my water, you know. The doctor's waiting for me. Uh, I'm just doing my editing, you know. Let me show you guys. I uploaded guys yesterday a video about what happened at the restaurant. The guy was trying to basically fight me or whatever, you know. I just, I'm strong, God. Like, I just took the guy with both of my hands, grabbed him on his neck, because he really pissed me off, God. Grabbed him on his neck, and I raised him high, and I was like, kind of like doing this to him. Like, and he was like this, you know, kind of like shaking him till to, to he wakes up, because he was trying to kick me out of the restaurant. He was trying to kick me out of the restaurant when he told me that, I told him it's your duty to make sure that you, you're honest with us and you tell us the ingredients, every single thing. I don't have to ask you. Was in it. He said, no, you have to ask us. You have to ask us. It's your do. You have to ask. I'm not, I don't have to. What if I don't know? What if I don't, how do I know how, how you guys cook? How, what, what chef, what ingredients chef adds? I'm allergic, guys, to milk and butter. So if I have that, I'll, I'll die. I, you, you, allergy kills you guys. Once, twice, maybe your body fights with and you're successful. It's fine. You don't die. God, 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 God is there with you, helping you, you know, whatever. Your body is basically able to kind of survive as well. So imagine, imagine what happens. Next time, the third time you get allergy, your body kind of says, I, I'm, I had enough. And people die before, before, the, before the ambulance gets to you, before you even get to the, um, you know, the, the hospital. People die straight away with allergy. After maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, if you don't treat them, they're dead. Even systems, even IVs don't help them because allergy is so dangerous. It's up to your body, right? It's up to your body whether you want to be successful and win it or just let it, just, you can't handle it. So, he pissed me off and he told me, I said, then I'm, if you're not going to tell me, uh, if, it's, you know, if it's not your duty to tell me what ingredients there is in, the, in every single food that I want to order, then I'm not going to come here again. And I closed the menu and the menu kind of fell on his side, but he didn't fell on him, but it was just like a table there, right? A wood table, wooden table. And then I think he was like, oh, like, you know, he got upset that I'm disrespectful to him. He was disrespectful to me. He was basically saying, uh, you know, I'm not gonna tell you, I don't care, you know, if you have allergy and you might die, you know, but I'm not gonna, we don't have to tell you what's in it, you have to ask us, you have to ask us. I'm like, I'm an American, I'm an American, and I came from the most developed country in the world, most greatest country in the world, and you're telling me how a restaurant should, you know, uh, run his business, you know? And then he was like, 
who are you, you know, oh, get out, get out. He was trying to get, take me out, but he was so scared. He's even like, you know when there's different, when somebody's trying to, when somebody has power and they're physically strong and they're able to like, you know, grab you. He didn't even grab me. He was like, he was like, he walked, or you know, it was like the camera thing. And then he walked like around and he was like, get out, get out. And he was trying to walk me out. And then I grabbed him on his, by his neck with both my hands. My friend was there. And then I, I was, I started shaking him and I was almost gonna like kind of push him on the floor by grabbing his neck, push his neck and go, but there was tables behind him, right? There was tables and I didn't want to like damage it. Like not just the table, but I didn't want him to like mess up his back, you know? Cause once you fall on, you, you, you're gonna injure something. I don't want, I, I don't want to do that. I, I fear God and I don't want to like put people into like, you know, hospitals and everything. So I don't want to do that guys. Like it's just about disrespectful, you know? Like, I just shook him because he was trying to force me to get out. He was like, get out of the restaurant. He was like, who, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Get, come on, get out, come on, come on, come here, get out of the restaurant. I grabbed him on his neck and I started shaking him and he was like, he had no control guys. He was like, oh, it was like this. He couldn't even like control and like grab my hand. He was so scared. He wasn't expecting that. That's why you should never mess with people who believe in God and the righteous God fearing people because he was trying to kill me guys and everybody else by not, by not, telling people by not being honest and generous and by telling people by running at least you should write on the menu mashed potatoes ingredients has some ingredients milk whether it has uh you know butter whether it has um you know uh, olive oil or you know you have to you have to be honest and he's saying no i wouldn't have to tell you this is like saying no we don't have to tell you what's in it basically we have to basically uh give you allergy and it's not our duty you have to ask us first if you know if what it has in it no i don't it's your duty. How do I know what chef puts in it? Maybe the stuff that you say that's in it, maybe it's something else is in it. So I need to know exactly. And they, they're so lazy to even go and ask the chef and to, to tell them, oh yeah, we can, uh, uh, you know, we can, we can we exclude the milk. They didn't do that for me. They did nothing. They were trying to kick me out. And I grabbed him on his neck and I just shook him like that. And then my friend, my friend, you know, grabbed him because he was trying to do something. But he, he, he couldn't do nothing. He was scared. And then I actually went forward. I kind of I couldn't push him again. Like I kind of slap him. And then uh, the waiter, one of the waiters like, of the restaurant, he, 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 he held my hand because he saw that my friend is held, holding him, the other guy down, the one who was disrespectful to me. And so he was kind of, it was very fair that he also stopped me as well because he was scared. Because as soon as I shook him and I just released him, I pushed him, I, I attacked again and I pushed him. Like I did this, like kind of slapped him like on his face, like on his here or chest or whatever. Whatever. And then the, the, the waiter saw a good thing that, thank God, like waiter saw that, yes, my friend is holding down his friend. So now it's a good chance for him to, to hold me down because, you know, then the, stop will, the fight will stop. And I'm glad he did. And when he did hold me down and kind of pushed me sideways, I did nothing to him, to the waiter, because it's good what he did, you know, he had to stop the fight because he saw that I'm, I'm going to beat him up. I saw I'm going to beat him up. He, the guy was weak. The guy had no strength whatsoever. And he was trying to kick me out. You know why I didn't have strength? When people don't believe in God, God doesn't believe in them. And when they fear not God and they fear the devil, and the devil is the one who makes them angry and who, 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 who gives them no patience. Because if you believe in God, you have patience. And under that, but God gives you strength. So when somebody in the future says, hey, stop believing in God, stop reading this, stop reading that, stop reading God, um, God's book, all that. So we have power to defend it, the book itself and us, our beliefs. If they try to attack us, were allowed to defend out him. He was trying to attack me. He was trying to push me, force me to get out of the restaurant when he had no right to do that. He wasn't even the manager or the owner of the restaurant. He was just a waiter there, a hostess. The waiter, he was a waiter, not a hostess, a waiter wearing a white uh, a shirt, uh, white shirt. That's what waiters wear, wear in that restaurant. It's called Cafe Baku, guys. We never ever go there. Cafe Baku is the worst service and the food and they'll, they'll never tell you the ingredients. You'll see like mashed potatoes. It will never say mashed potato with butter. It will never say there's milk in it. It will just say mashed potatoes. So if you're allergic, if you're lactose intolerant like me, if allergies, don't go there because you, they'll kill you basically. And if you go like, hey, you know, if let's say you're having, you know, like how I had mashed potato and I feel like there's milk in it and I stopped eating and I was scared that, uh, thank God, like my allergy didn't start, you know, so I didn't feel like, you know, my neck is getting swollen or my you know, rashes. So imagine you guys you go then order food and it says mashed potatoes and it doesn't say anything like the ingredients and you have that and you blame it on them they're gonna say no it's your fault you should have asked us i was in it what when you go to america it will say on the menu guys if you have any allergies to nuts or milk let us know milk they know milk and nuts are like number one allergy 
products give you allergy. A lot of people are sensitive to that. Not everyone, but a lot of people are. So that's why they write it. They write it, they warn you once, not just once, twice. They, they write on the menu, under the menu, and then when you go to the restaurant, what happens when you go to the restaurant? When you go to the restaurant, uh, the waiter comes and she says, hey guys, uh, I just want to let you know, you know, I just want to, to want you to be aware that, you know, if you have any, uh, you guys let me know if, if I have to be aware of anything, like if you have any allergies to nuts or milk. You see, even the waiter, she know, they know that sometimes you might be busy, you might be hungry, you might be like talking to someone, you might be having a conversation with somebody at your table, so you might not be looking at, you know, at uh, paying attention and asking if something has something, you know. So they even warn you twice on the menu that it says that, and the waiter comes and says, you have any allergies? And then, guess what? When they ask you, you actually remember. And you go like, yeah, let's say you're busy having a conversation, or an important meeting, right? And then they come up to you and say, hey guys, and you don't even realize, that you're, cause sometimes you might be so busy, you don't even realize somebody's talking, and they might be like, Hey guys, you know, if there's any allergies or, or you know anything like that, you should be aware of. Please, please do let me now. Do let me know now. They say do let me know now for a reason, so they don't make a mistake and order, put an order for you for something that you have allergy for. You see, guys, this is why America is more, the most developed country in the world. God bless America. Make America great again, the greatest it has ever been. America is beauty. America is the last hope in humanity. America truly is the last hope in humanity. If it wasn't for America, Azerbaijan would have been conquered by the Hitler, by the Germans. When, when Russians started attacking, you know, when the Hitler, the Hitler was always in, in Azerbaijan and we have oil. They want, they want our oil. They wanted our oil and you guys came and helped us. You guys came and attacked, uh, you know, the, the Hitler and then they, they just surrendered. They never surrendered when Russians started, you know, fighting them because Russians had the worst army, military, you know, the tanks, the cars, the technology, they were so like the Soviet Union, God cursed them so much, the equipments were bad, you know, they, they didn't have good guns, you know, everything was getting jammed and, you know, it's just so old, like, that's why the Soviet Union was so weak and we freed ourselves, we, Azerbaijan became the first independent country in the world, that's why I feel like an American, because even America fought, fought for, 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 the, for, our, for their independence. If America didn't fight for, fight for their independence and didn't become independent, they wouldn't help Azerbaijan and kill the, the, stop the Hitler from reaching Azerbaijan and getting our oil. So our oil is Americans. This is the, what God gave us. This is our oil that they're feeding on. This is our oil, guys. It's our oil. So thank you guys for saving us and for making our country grow, you know. Uh, if Hitler, if they took the oil, I mean, that's, we're done. We're done, that's it, man. They would have taken all the oil and then they would have just killed, like, stayed there and, you know, made, you know, whatever. It was never going to happen anyways. The army wasn't that, they didn't have that many soldiers. Russian, the, there were so many Russian soldiers, not that, but Americans came. We had, Americans, we are so many people, right? Uh, like the army, the military, there's so many people in the military, thank God. Like, it's such a blessed country. That only, America is the only country where... You actually get paid. It's like a job, right? So, so you get a salary, wage, whatever. So America is blessed, guys. America is the last hope in the humanity. There is no more independence left in the world. America is the way, the only democracy country in the world. That's why I love America. And I love Azerbaijan, my country, you know. And I love you, my countrymen, Americans. You guys did, you guys saved Azerbaijan. Thank you guys for saving Azerbaijan and our oil that God didn't want to give them because they were racist and they wanted to kill us and steal, corrupt. Hitler! Hitler! Hi Hitler! He said, hi Hitler! And he was like this. Hi Hitler! Shut up. Like, come on, man. Backwarded communist, like, shut up. You know, idiot. And he was killing the Jews in Poland. Come on, man. He was killing the Jews. Like, is this how you fear God? Like, you're trying to conquer? You think God is going to make you powerful and you're going to conquer the world and you're going to win? Really? After Americans that became independent, they fought for, for our freedom and for, the free, um, for this uh, freedom of speech? Are you serious now? God would never, God never makes mistakes. God always makes the God-fearing, God-believing people the strongest, the Christians, strongest, the Muslims, the Jews, not fucking False Christians who claim to be a Christian and they kill them, like Hitler. They kill Jews and they conquer the world. They kill them. What, what the hell is this? What kind of Christian are you? 
They are not Christian. They're just disbelievers. Anyways, guys, I love you guys. I have to run now. I have to cook. Anyways, let me guys show you before I leave my place and I cook. So um, I'm having quality because remember, you know, like how I did the intolerance test and apparently because I, the bodybuilding diet, I've always been having chicken eggs every single morning and I've been having chicken three times a day. So I'm, I'm intolerant to chicken and uh, chicken eggs. So I have quail eggs. I can have quail eggs, guys. Thank God, because I haven't been having this before. So when you don't have the same food over and over, you don't develop a intolerance to it. So I'm having quail eggs, lots of, lots of protein, lots of, and it doesn't have any cholesterol. Zero cholesterol. So if you wanna have eggs, have quail eggs. Don't have like real eggs, because, I mean, you can have that once in a while, but you know, trying to have quail eggs, but the, the only other thing is that when you break them, you have to, you know, like hit, hit it with a knife, like really quick, like sharp, and then it kind of breaks because it's just so hard, it's so small, it's just so hard for it to like kind of break like the real eggs do. Uh, like the shells are just weird, like the shells are like um, too hard, like too hard. So when you break the shell, it's just so small that you just get a deep, like a tiny cut, and you have to kind of like break it more even. So, anyways, guys, this is that uh, my quail eggs. I'm gonna show you guys my fridge again. My uh, quail eggs, some, go some, some more quail eggs, you know. Uh, I got my olives, you know, and we have some. You know, because I like in the morning to have olives. I'm having some soya. I'm gonna have some soya milk. Uh, it's really good for you. Uh, lots of protein, uh, no sugar. Uh, oh shit, guys! My mom she bought quails here, and I've been oh my god, like, I've been having. I think this is off, guys. No, guys, no. And I need my banana as well in the morning, guys, to increase my blood sugar. That's why I'm like, why does this fridge smell? I think it's because of this, guys. Oh no, fuck. Oh, oh, oh. No, guys, it stinks. Oh. Guys, oh my god, like, I forgot. I feel so like I wasted. Like, I hate that, guys. Like, that's why I don't like things. It just so annoys me. When I, when I, I just hate seeing things put in a bag. Like, my mom should put it in a bag. Like, I don't know, I should have taken it, it's not my bum so bad. Always, never blame, like, never blame others, right? Blame yourself, because I, I have to blame myself, because I could have taken it out from the, from the back. I was the one who came home and I should have done it, like. It's just I'm used to living with, I was living, I was just staying with my mom for like a month or two when I moved here. So I kind of, I'm kind of used to, so I kind of think that she lives here and she's going to go in my fridge, but you know, it's not the truth. That's what happens when you live with somebody for like a month or two and then you move go to your place, you think that oh somebody else in the house and they're gonna take care of it. No. no. So it's kind of getting I need some time to get used to, you know? So oh man. All this quail man, like for nothing. Like I'm so st stupid, like Oh my stinks like it smells like really bad, like oh. Anyways guys, so when I have this, my banana. Uh, we have my olive oil, I, uh, olive oil, olives, what am I saying, olive oil, olives, fit, so low salt, very low salt, very healthy, no, no additives, nothing, just salt and a little bit, a little bit of salt, well, very low sodium, I can't even taste the salt, so that's how you know it's healthy, you don't want to get stuff as olives, don't get with sodium, a lot of sodium, so don't, don't do that, or water retention and just not good for you, have soya, soya milk is really good, um, you know, of course, the quail eggs. I'm gonna uh, fry it in the pan. So, there, yeah, guys, I'm gonna quickly, quickly recook this and I'm gonna do some more editing and I'm gonna go to the doctor's place. So, I'll see you guys when I'm there. Peace.